Good morning. Good morning. This is another beautiful day that the Lord has given us, isn't it? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We want to welcome all of you all to our church service this morning. We're celebrating 93 years of faithful service. Amen. Let us now prepare ourselves for our service for a moment of meditation. Amen, 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 draw us nearer, amen, amen. We want to thank Ori Grin for that solo to get us in the mood, amen? amen, for us to just meditate and think about how good God really is and how he's brought us through, not only the 93 days, but brought us through this week, amen, 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 amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the land remain silent. Uh, let us now pray for our invocation. Heavenly Father, merciful Lord, we thank you. We thank you for 93 years. We thank you for uh, waking us up this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this church, a, a place where we can come just to praise your holy name. We thank you for that breath of air that we just took just that second ago. We thank you for that batting of the eye that washed away the dirt that might have been in our eyes just a second ago. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up and allowing us to make our way down here to this house of prayer. And we just ask now, Heavenly Father, that let your Holy Spirit fall afresh upon each and every one of us. We invoke the Holy Spirit to come in this place, 
come into our singing, come into our preaching, come into our praying, come into each one of us, Heavenly Father, and lift us up. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh upon us. Let us be able to uh, do what you would have us to do, and that is to worship you with all our heart. Ask it in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his sake we do pray. All the saints said amen. 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 Let's give the Lord some praise, you all. For I am happy to be here. <laughs> I am happy to be here one more time. He woke me up and started me on my way. I'm, I, I, you all can't see it, but I'm wearing shoes for the first time in about a year and a half. <laughs> I've been walking around with my sneakers on because of the way my legs was feeling from uh, whatever. But God is good. Allowed me to put my shoes on this morning. Amen, 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 amen. For the little things, you all, just for the little things. Amen, amen, amen. Our opening hymn this morning is a praise song. It's a beautiful song. It's a praise song. We, we have come into this place. We have come into this house. We have come with thanksgiving on our heart. So you all sing along with us as we sing, we have come into this house. And let us just praise him as we sing it.
It's coming from Psalms 100. <laughs> and we will be reading the King James Version of that. So read along with me. It says, I make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures all generations. Amen. Make a joyful noise and be thankful. <laughs> on this Sunday before Thanksgiving that's coming up on this Thursday, we are thankful. And we are thankful that we can make a joyful noise. We can come through these gates with Thanksgiving. We have joy in our hearts because we know what he has done for us. Woke us up this morning, started us on our way, gave us breath. <laughs> oh, yes, we got a lot to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask if Sister Marlene Mabel would come, and she's going to bring announcements uh, as well as welcome to all of us and all of you on this glorious day. Amen? Please give your undivided attention to Sister Marlene. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. Also, I'd like to uh, say, Pastor said he has on his shoes today, Thank you, Jesus, I have on my shoes today, too. 
So um, Lord put me in a spot this morning to get that shoe on, you know, and, and, and step out there on faith and not be scared to step in there in a regular shoe. So I am truly happy about that. <laughs> and uh, I'm just happy to be here. I, I haven't been here that long, but the years I have been here, I am so grateful to be a part of Mount Pleasant family. And we're celebrating 93 years. And that's a total blessing. And, and uh, like I was telling Sister Venables that this morning in Sunday school, she's one year older than the church. <laughs> And she's been with the church since she was 12 years old. So we, we need to celebrate her too. God bless her. Uh, I know I'm supposed to do the announcements, so um, I'll do the announcements. Our Sunday school is now back in session each Sunday morning at 9.30 at the church and on Zoom. For those of you who would like to join us online, please send your email address to Reverend Johnson as soon as possible so she can prepare the materials. The following members have celebrated their birthdays this month. We pray that God bless them on their great day. Dr. Char Dr. Mr. Charles Dixion was November 2nd. Uh, Brother Howard Bell was November 17th. Sister Ann Shaw was November 19th. My son, Dennis Mabel, was yesterday, November 20th. We are observing today our 93rd church anniversary. We will not have an afternoon service or a dinner. However, we will celebrate 93 years of faithful service among ourselves. This year has been a year of getting us back together. Hopefully we'll be able to return to recognizing annual days next year. We look forward to having a great service today. Next Sunday, November 28th, is the last Sunday in the month and the first Sunday of Advent season. It is our tradition to decorate the church to celebrate Christmas. Those of you who would like to join the Christmas decoration teams, please see Trustee House. Harlan Bauer at the end of service, but we will be having a decoration next Saturday, November 27th at 12. So those who can make it out, please try to come out. And I'd like to just say God bless. And we have a guest, a visitor. And your name is Miss Mary Glover. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you know you're always welcome, Sister Elbeck. <laughs> I'll give this mic back over to Pastor. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. Say amen one more time. <laughs> amen, amen. We want to thank Sister Marlene for bringing those announcements and giving the welcome to Sister Glover. We're just happy to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> I know Deacon Halsey. Deacon Halsey considers you as a daughter. Amen. So we're just happy to have you visiting with us on today. Amen. Amen. Sister Elbeck. Sister Elbeck is here with us. Sister Elbeck uh, is an associate member. And, and it, is, it is so interesting because we, uh, when she... When she call on the phone or when she leaves a message or something, she will sign it, your associate member. And, and, and I have to put a smile on my face because she is. She was a member of this church. When you, you start talking about 93 years, you go back and you're going to get Sister Elbeck. Matter of fact, uh, or Oregon, she was where you are. <laughs> playing for the choir and singing, I tell you. So we have a lot to be thankful for when you think about all of what has happened. I know we would normally, Sister Glover, we would normally get up at this time and pass the peace of Jesus to each person and give them a hug. But because of the uh, pandemic and the uh, restrictions that we have, we're just gonna ask everybody to wave their hands, look around, let them know that God loves you, and so do I. <laughs> God loves you. 
and so do I. Amen. 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 We also have a, a guest, Georgette, is with us today, and we're happy to see Georgette is with us. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. When you think about, when you think about 93 years, and uh, Sister Marlene Mabel said that we're not going to have a dinner, and we're not going to have a, a churches coming in this afternoon to visit with us because this has been a crazy year. It's been a, a trying year. But it's been a year to bring people together, really, when you think about it, because folks are calling on the phone and talking on the phone to each other, and we're just thankful. And we said it's not really uh, in our best interest or their best interest to invite another church down during these particular times. So it'll be next year we'll get back to inviting churches in and having our dinners and, and doing all those things. I'm quite sure by next year this pandemic will be under control. That is, if everybody go ahead and get the, vir uh, get the vaccine so that we can get herd immunity now that the children are taking it, we will be all right. But when you think back, I, I had uh, gone and gotten uh, <laughs> Our, 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 uh, yeah, I know you all have this, but it was the, uh, from our 90th, from our 90th, uh, anniversary, and I was looking through it, remembering some of the pictures and photographs and things that we talked about three years ago at the 90th, and we talked about in 1926, at 1928 when uh, a mission, uh, 12 people got together in a little schoolhouse and, 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 and formed this church. And, and, and they moved from the, the schoolhouse over to uh, Deacon Trice's uh, front porch, along with his wife, Mary, and, and they had church there. And then they moved into the little red, the little red church. Everybody knew us as the little red church. And from there, we went on into this building. I mean, oh well, it wasn't the red church. Red church went to the other building down the corner, and now from the corner to here, here we are today. But over those 90 years, when, when you think back, you know, uh, some people come to our church and they will see Miniville sign on the uh, community center, yeah, yeah. and they don't know that Miniville was a member of this church. Amen. And it was because of the work that she did for the community out of this church that the township named the community center for her. Uh, some of you all, when you come in, you will see uh, that, that, that gold blue with the gold lettering sign out front in the park uh, 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 showing Potter's Crossing as a historical village and I want you to know that that sign is there because of the work of this church yes. along with the mayor at that time <laughs> Mayor Resigliano was our mayor at that time and she worked with us here at the church to get that sign put up so that everybody who comes into this area realizes that this here this whole area not the uh, the project area doing the uh, uh, renovation uh, a piece down there, but the whole area was called Potters. All right, all right. <laughs> so this is the village of Potters. I, I like to say that Potters was, was sort of like um, uh, old New York in a way. Uh, it had its own, uh, African Americans had their own shops, had their own stores and all of that. And I know Ms. Venable used to correct me, and, and she would say, now, Pastor, uh, I think you're kind of embellishing it a bit much, aren't you? I said, no, they had their own shops, they had their own stores, they only had their own everything. It was a self-sufficient community. So, you know, we, we have a, a, a good heritage here. Also, all those 93 years, you all know all of what has happened, but that, just, I'm just thinking back. I've been here 13 years, and I'm thinking back about the fact that 
Uh, when we got here, we had a community day. And out here in the park, where we invited the community in, uh, cruising with Jesus Christ. And uh, it was a great day. It kind of rained a little bit, but it was a good day. We had a, a flea market here. And people from the flea market and came and they bought goods and they, and when they took their blood pressure. We had people from the hospital was here because we were trying to do. And then we, we started a ministry with the uh, a, a, a social worker down at the, oh, we go the wrong way, down at the end of the street here. <laughs> and we each Friday, oh, uh, well, well, once a month, we have a luncheon and a spiritual session with the seniors in this community who come and they play games, they eat, they, they, they hear a, a message from Reverend Johnson for our outreach ministry of touching people outside the four walls of this church. You know, those are the things that, you know, you say, well, the church is great, and you come in here and enjoy it, but this church is in the community and is doing things to help the community. We, uh, we, we have, uh, I think we are unique in this matter that we have a homebound outreach ministry, <laughs> Sister Elbeck, for those seniors who can't come to the building and they don't have Wi-Fi <laughs> or internet in their homes, they can still watch us on Sundays using our little grand pad yeah. service that we, we have. All, and it's, it's easy to operate. Just push a button and here we are. Regardless of where they are, they, don't, they, they could be out on the street corner because it works just like a cell phone. And I think about that. And you know, somebody asked me, they, they said, well, you all have been streaming for a long time. Why did you do that? Well, Trudy Smith uh, was a member of this church for years. Melba Broadhurst, member of this church for years. These people are gone on now. Maxine is sitting back there, her mother, yes, yes. member of this church. And they could not come into the building. Yes. So what we were trying to do was to figure out a way how these seniors, these, these ladies who couldn't come into the church could still see yes. their church. Yes. Oh, it's nice to turn on TV and see the other evangelists, but to see their church. So that's how it all got started. And I know Maxine knew that I was asking her years ago. We were trying to figure out a way to do this. And we finally got this idea with the grandpad. And uh, of course, Maxine's mother has gone on to glory. And, and uh, Melba's gone on to glory. And so is Trudy. But Sister Ann Shaw. <laughs> Sister Ann Shaw, who watches us every Sunday, she is the benefactor of that ministry, and she's watching and using that grandpad to see us, regardless of whether you have uh, Wi-Fi or not. So we're just proud of some of the things that we've done. Oh, I could go on and on and on. Sister Glover, we've had movie night here at the church. <laughs> we, we've shown all kinds of movies, and matter of fact, there's a movie that's playing in the movies now and also on HBO Max that's called King Richard. And it's a movie about the uh, Williams sisters, Serena and, 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 and Venus. And uh, it, it's really a great movie if you all can see it. And if we were still doing our movie night, we would have that, <laughs> we would have that movie. Because I remember when we showed Black Panther, the place was packed here for Black Panther. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But anyway, uh, the church has been doing things to try to help people. Yes, yes. Right now, we have a ministry. I don't know if you all know it or not, but uh, uh, Reverend Johnson is now certified as a chaplain. I don't mean I don't mean just saying pastor made her a chaplain. I mean certified clinically trained at at JFK Hospital chaplain sitting before a board answering questions certified certified chaplain. 
And because of that, we have a ministry now that she is running from this church to help people who are in, in disadvantaged, people who are homeless, people who are living in homes. Uh, it, it's just amazing the things that uh, this church is involved in. So I'm not going to tell you anymore. I'm bored with that, but uh, I hope it's not boring. But anyway, normally, normally we would have a big old video presentation of all of that. Well, maybe next year we'll have a big <laughs> video presentation. But we want to thank all of the women who on those Fridays give up their time to go and, and, and work with the seniors. We want to thank Reverend Johnson for heading up that ministry to do that. And uh, we've been streaming for years now. And, and when we stream, we're now on Edison TV. So uh, if you go to channel 15 or channel 45, if you, if you got those channels, you can see us on Sundays at 3 o'clock or 6.30 on Monday evenings. We, uh, we were able to uh, purchase a bus, a 24-passenger bus. Yes, yes. And somebody asked me, said, Pastor, who's going to drive that bus? I said, the Lord will make a way. Yes, yes. And at that time, I think uh, Rod would just come in occasionally. Rod uh, Johnson came over one day. And I said, you got a CDL? He said, yes. A commercial driver's license? I said, yeah. And now he is doing the bus driving for us. Any place we need to go, he drives the bus. Oh, wouldn't his mother be proud of him? Lord have mercy. His mother would sit right over there, right about where, 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 where Deacon Halls is sitting now. She uh, buttons popping off of her shirt because her son is now the bus driver. And not only is he the bus driver, he's also our technical technician. <laughs> he's now sitting up in the crow's nest where my, my son used to always call it the crow's nest because Van uh, Calhoun, my son, for years sat up there and worked the, uh, the, uh, the camera and the equipment. And, uh, but you all know Van is, uh, has his good days and bad days with his illness. But there is always a ram in the bush. And that ram in the bush is Rod, and we just want to thank him. The, uh, the church, just talk to any member, and they can tell you. Talk to Sister Elbeck. She can tell you. Talk to Sister uh, 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 Palsy. She can tell you. Talk, talk to uh, uh, Reverend Johnson. She can tell you. Talk to the Sister Price. She can tell you. They, they go back. Talk to Brother Hart Harlan. They go back and they can tell you about before I came. They can tell you about the days of Reverend Carpenter. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, anyway, this church has a great legacy. And we are trying to live up to it. Because I'm quite sure those 12 people who got together 93 years ago they probably thought that the church might last a year, two years, and here it is, 93 years later, we're still here. Sister Venable, Sister Venable, Lord have mercy, if she was here, and I know she's watching, if she was here, she would be telling us about uh, some of the pastors. She knew, the, she knew those pastors. I said, you knew Reverend Barnes? Oh, yeah. I said, oh, 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 oh. Well, Reverend Barnes is just a picture on a wall, you know. We, we, that's all he was. And, uh, but uh, she knew them all. And if she was here, she would tell you, as a 12-year-old young lady joining the church, and here's the thing about it, she has been a member of this church for all of those years. And we just recognize her and thank her for her dedication and her service. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. Well, at this time, we're going to have our, I guess it's our scripture. Well, we're going to have our prayer. <laughs> and all of what I just said is a good reason to pray. 
because the Lord has blessed us for all these years. So we can be very thankful to the Lord. When we lead our, start our prayer, we always start with a song that's dear to me because he is sweet. He is very sweet. And he's sweet, I know. So you all sing along with us as we sing one verse of he's sweet, I know. that there's all kinds of problems that's going on in the world today. A person just trying to find some rest sleeping on the subway. And without any provocation whatsoever, somebody just came up and stabbed the person yes, yes, yes. for no reason. We know that we all have been glued to the television and seeing, looking at the outcome of the trial. In Wisconsin, and regardless of uh, how you feel about the verdict of uh, the acquittal, Lord is still in the blessing business, and He's still in control. There are those of us who we we look at justice, and we want justice, and our idea of justice sometimes does not come to fruition the way we think it should. But I <laughs> serve God who sits high and looks low and whether we get the justice uh, that we're looking for or we think should be justice, he has the last word. He has the last word. And the young man, although he might have been acquitted and found innocent, he will have to live with the fact that he killed two people and wounded a third person critically. That's something that he will have to live with the rest of his life. I pray that he will be able to forgive and have some kind of remorse, own up to, and admit what he did was wrong, regardless of the technical defense of that was you self-defense. I can tell you all my personal feelings that if you go someplace that you have no business being, and something bad happens to you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Well, Pastor, I went into that bar, and guess what? Man wanted to beat me up, so I had to defend myself. Well, brother, why were you in the bar in the first place? That is not a place where you should have been. 
So sometimes we do have to understand that there are consequences to our actions and we will be held accountable regardless of whether or not that accountability serve our purpose or not, we will be held accountable. So this morning we're praying for that family, the families of those people who lost their loved ones, and even a young man, we're praying for his family who, who committed such a crime. We're praying for all of those uh, jurors who are on other cases. There are all kinds of cases that's going on right now, and there are strong and difficult decisions have to be made, and we're praying that they will be moved by the evidence as well as by their Christian belief in right and wrong. For sometimes the, uh, the law might be one thing, but it's the spirit of the law that we live by. We're praying for all of our members. I know we're still praying for my son. He's traveling today. Lord have mercy. He got an opportunity to fly to, he and his wife, to fly to Los Angeles, California uh, to see his daughter, son-in-law, plus his two granddaughters. And one was in a, in a, in a Hollywood production uh, produced by Debbie Allen uh, in California. So I guess our great-great-great-great-granddaughter is a little star. And, uh, and incidentally, that's the one that's selling products on Facebook if you haven't seen them. But he flew out and to see the, 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 the smile on his face, it just says that God is a good God. And during this Thanksgiving, I know that, I know that all of us are going to be getting with our friends and relatives and if not in person, you'll see them over the, over the telephone or whatever. And it's such a nice thing that you can bring family together at this time of the year and just smile with them. So we're praying that the Lord will bless them and give them safe travel back. I guess they should be on the plane by now. Uh, they should be on the plane by now, on their way back to New Jersey. And we pray that everything goes well for them. Praying, still praying for Sister Venable. I saw her in Sunday school this morning on Zoom, and Sister Venable was giving such a, ter a powerful testimony to all who saw her. We're just praying for her, and we're praying for all of you all who might be in a little pain. <laughs> My wife said that she had arthritis, and not only arthritis, but his brother, Romidas <laughs> came by to see her, but we're thankful that the Lord uh, allowed the doctor to give her something that helped her with that. So we're praying for all of you all, praying for the president, the vice president. Uh, I know he had a birthday, and, and it was an interesting thing they mentioned this past week that for about an hour, no, it may have been two hours. We had the first African-American, our first woman of color to be president of the United States. <laughs> because when the president had to do his uh, colonoscopy, they had to put him under. And when they put him under, she became president while he was under. <laughs> so we're praying for her, praying for all of, all of our leaders that they will do. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. We thank you for the 95 to 93 years. We're praying that Reverend, for Reverend Johnson, who will bring the message today. We have uh, the daughter of this church and the history of this church. This church is now licensed and ordained the first female minister in its 93-year-old history. So it's awfully fitting on this 93rd day that we allow her to bring the message. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for her and lift her up so that she can praise you in the manner in which you have already blessed her. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, that we have volunteers who will volunteer to do the work of this church. Sister Felicia, who is 
who is an usher, but not only an usher, but she's also our screen technician. Marlene Mabel, who is Heavenly Father, she was talking about she has a shoe on, that's because she is an amputee. And you would not know that by just watching her walk and move and around the church, but she now has a shoe on that, that amputeed foot. And we thank the Lord for that. We thank the Lord for her sister, Sister Charlene, who now is the one who takes, takes the temperature and passes out the masks and makes sure that everyone is okay before they come in to the church. So thankful for Deacon Halsey, Heavenly Father, who is always on the phone trying to get the, uh, the members finding out how they're doing, sending cards out to them, talking to them, and, and working here at the church as the deacon. Brother Harlan, Heavenly Father, who you all might not know it, but while we're home at home sleeping or taking a nap or we might be uh, eating our dinner, he is down here making sure that the, the, the head bushes are trimmed and they're all making sure that the... Uh, the filters are changed in the in the furnace and the air conditioner, making sure that the bills are being paid properly, making sure that the church is running, no no uh, problems, uh, uh, disputing the gas company for overcharging us, and things of that sort that goes on without e you even knowing it. We thank you for his de de uh, uh, faithful dedication and service. We thank all of you all for just being here with us. So Heavenly Father, we're just praying for all. You know who needs prayer. We're asking that you continue to bless them. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing Sister Elbeck and Sister Glover to be among us on this morning. We know that uh, they have their own issues, whatever they might be. We're just asking that you watch over them, bless them, and surely we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. But we ask it in the master's name with your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give him some praise. Strong winds may blow. scripture for this morning, for this afternoon, is coming from Psalm, the 19th chapter, verses 7 through 11, and we're going to ask the First Lady of the Church, Reverend Sharon E. Cully, who is also the ex-pastor of the Somerset Presbyterian Church, along with the Siloam Hope. <laughs> Presbyterian Church. Will she come now and give us the scripture reading for today? Amen. 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 It's Siloam Hope First Presbyterian Church in Elizabeth that I was blessed to go up after I ended my service at Somerset after 15 years to merge three congregations into one. And then when the Lord said, Amen, he finally allowed me to come to Mount Pleasant full time. Amen. And I share with my friends, just if you'll allow me a moment, Pastor, but I share with my friends that before I came to Mount Pleasant full-time, it's almost like immediately the day that the pastor announced that I was here, my, uh, my title went from Reverend Cully to 
first lady. <laughs> and for some women, that might have been uh, uh, kind of like a slap in the face. But to know the people of Mount Pleasant, those that you can't see uh, because they're watching, and those who are here, it's an honor. Because I have never been a missionary. I've never been a deaconess. All of my ministry has been from behind the pulpit as a clergy. And to come into this house of prayer and be a part of this family and for them to refer to me as First Lady. Hey, First Lady. It shows you what kind of a family this is. And uh, the Reverend Johnsons and Halseys and others, uh, Miss Venables, who helped to uh, continue the image of this church makes it exciting to be here. And then for the first time in 37 years of ministry, I'm fine with my husband full time. And that's a blessing. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalms 19, verses 7 through 20. And I will be reading from the New International Version. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 through 11. And it reads as follows. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the law, Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is waned. In keeping, in, if your servant is warned, in keeping them, there is great reward. Thus ends the reading and the hearing of the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 You know, uh, as pastor, I am so thankful uh, because there are so many people who support me and take care of me that uh, uh, I don't have to preach today. <laughs> My associate is preaching. I don't have to read scripture today. My first lady, <laughs> my wife, is reading scripture. And you know, when you think back over the 93 years, Sister Elbeck it's, uh, and, and De uh, Deacon Halsey, you know, June Johnson would normally be sitting right back there on that back row. And uh, she, for years, was the pastor's aide. And she was always trying to take care of the pastor. Well, Sister June went on home to glory. But you see, God knows what he's doing. So he then took Maxine Fielding and said, Maxine, I want you to do what June was doing. So Maxine Fielding is now the head of the Pastors Aid Society, taking care of the pastor. <laughs> and I want to thank her for all of what she does, taking care of me. Uh, and that's why I say that there are people around me And my good friend, uh, Clara, sitting over there with her mask on. I can see her eyes. <laughs> For years, she was uh, like a, a member of the family in our household, taking care of my mother-in-law, uh, my wife's sister, uh, mother, mother, uh, my wife's mother. And uh, I, I really, really appreciate her. And to this day, she still calls herself taking care of the past. I got to take care of the past, that says, well. 
And I thank her so much for taking care of the pastor, for all of what she does. Uh, in church, out of church, behind church, <laughs> on phone. <laughs> and I thank her for that. See, over the 93 years, you develop people, people develop and become, become spiritual, and they do things. Not just carrying a gold leaf Bible and saying I can quote scripture from Genesis. To, they, they do stuff. They help people. They lift out and put a hand out. And that's what I admire and think and I'm just so grateful of this church over the last 93 years. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, it's offering time. It's offering time, and I'm going to ask if uh, uh, Trustee uh, Bauer would come now. And uh, lift our offering, give you an opportunity. And it is an opportunity to be able to give back a portion of what God has blessed us with. Now, I know I've gotten phone calls, and people have been questioning me. They say, Pastor, uh, you know, the 93rd the church anniversary kind of sneaked up on us in a way. And uh, we normally make a sacrificial offering. I said, oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. The Lord knows that. Don't worry about that. Do what you can do. Uh, that, it doesn't matter. Do what you can do. You got the rest of the year to do whatever you want to do. So don't worry about that. Just just be grateful that the Lord has given us something to give back to him. Amen? Amen. We're now turning the services over to uh, Trustee Bauer. Well, it's offering time. It's offering time. It gives you an opportunity to give back a portion of what God has blessed you with. We're so thankful that our members are tithers and they are sending in their tithes. And those of you who are not members who are watching this, this service, we're asking that you support this service by sending in your contribution. You can do it one of three ways. If you're near the church, around the church, you can always make a deposit in the mailbox at the church. The church is there. Also, if you would like to mail in, send in a check or a money order, we'd we'll be happy to receive it. The address is on the screen in 87 Grove Avenue, Edison, New Jersey, 08820. Also, those of you who would like to use your credit card, you can also send a donation in using PayPal. Uh, you, we can accept all of the major credit cards. We'd be so happy to receive the contribution from you. So we know that you're going to be faithful, obedient to God's will to give children. So let us now pray over this offering. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for these who have given back a portion of what you have blessed them with. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you bless it, consecrate it, let it be multiplied tenfold. Surely, Heavenly Father, so we can use it here on earth for your kingdom. We ask now that you bless it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Singing, praise God from whom all blessings flow.
We know that our other trustee, Harry Bradford, is not with us today. He's, uh, we, we got word that his sister, Gwen, is sick, Gwen Good. Gwen is not well, and he is uh, trying to help with that family this morning. We're praying for her as well. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. amen. You know, <coughs> I often say that be careful whose hand you hold. <laughs> I mean, you might be uh, thinking that you're going to hold somebody's hand and they're, they're there to, to take care of you, to help you, and they ain't there to help you at all. <laughs> so, so when you hold, when you hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So our sermonic selection this morning hold to God's unchanging hand. And after that selection, the next voice you hear will be that of the associate minister, uh, that's Reverend Sharon D. Johnson, will come and bring the message. Hear her, hear her this morning. So we're singing, hold to God's unchanging hands. Let us sing loud, spirit filled, because we really want to hold to his hand. Amen. Amen.
Amen. All right. All right. God is good and greatly to be praised. I've been watching this young man. And Argrin, I was watching your feet. Because I remember when you told me before, I got to get the feet and hands coordinated. But I heard that bass with those feet, and I looked down there. God is greatly to be praised. Hold on to God's eternal hands. Amen. I rise this morning thanking God who's ahead of my life and thanking my pastor for allowing me to preach on this Sunday morning. Um, I, I'm just grateful this morning and um, can just shout with glory. Because this morning, this morning we had coronation. I don't know about y'all, but in Sunday school we were in Revelation chapter 19 when it talked about the bride of Christ and and, 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 and Christ coming together on the coronation and we did the hallelujah chorus this morning. So I, I'm full of hallelujahs this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. But this is a good morning. This is a beautiful Sunday morning, beautiful fall day. And today is our church's 93 years, as Pastor has told you. Uh, 93 years of faithful people serving a faithful God. And I've been here since 69. And although we may not be able to, to have what we usually have, we can still praise God. We can be grateful for his word. See, some people, they, they, they expect uh, God's word to hit them like a jolt of adrenaline. <laughs> Each time they read or study it, you know, they think they're supposed to get this electricity to go through them. Although the jolt may hit us periodically, the, reward, the rewards of God's word act somewhat like vitamins. Now, when you reach a certain age, you got to take supplements. When you're young, you know, your body can regenerate. But when you get to be our age, you got to take supplements. And if you're not, you should. People who regularly take vitamins do so because of their long-term benefits. Because every time they swallow one of the pills, they feel new strength surging through their bodies. They have developed the habit of consistently taking vitamins because they have been told that in the long haul, vitamin supplements are going to have a beneficial effect on their physical health. It's going to help you resist disease and, and it's going to be good for your general well-being. Well, I'm here to tell you that um, the same thing is true of reading and digesting God's Word. There will be times it will have a sudden and intense impact on you. But the real value lies in the cumulative effects that the long-term exposure to God's word will bring to our lives. Therefore, we are thankful for God's plan, yes. God's word of a lifetime assurance plan. All right. See, God gives us assurance through his word. And we should take heed to his word. God's word is an assurance plan that rewards us with lifetime benefits. So I've entitled my sermon, Gratitude for God's Assurance Plan. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I'd like to thank our First Lady, Reverend Cully, for reading the scripture this morning. And, um, and I want us to think as we're thinking through this, as we're going through this sermon, that we're going to be gathering during this week with family and friends uh, to feast on turkey and other trimmings. But I want us to be reminded of God's food plan that is better than an earthly food plan. For we ought to be thankful for the soul food, S-O-U-L, food, that God has provided and nourished us with. And he's nourished it with, for as long as you've been living, but has been nourishing this church as, for 93 years. This passage of scripture that we find in, in, in Psalms 19 tells us about this soul-nourishing food known as the Word of God. In verses 7 through 12, the psalmist David tells us how God re reveals himself through the scripture. It is amazing how God speaks to all of us. Although some men and women have little desire to listen to God, God continues to speak to us in many ways. In this Psalm of David, the psalmist tells us that God speaks through his creation. 
God speaks in the scriptures, and God speaks to our souls. For this morning, our, our, our focus will concern verses 7 through 11, with the emphasis on a phrase in verse 11 that says, in keeping them, there is great reward. As God speaks to us through his scripture, he gives us the food and nourishment for our spirit. That's why I call it soul food. And this soul food is beneficial. In this prayer of David, David gives us a picture of God's revelation through his word and the rewards we receive from his word. See, God nourishes our soul. We will receive all the nutrients we need to live a holy and righteous life before God. See, God's word has value for our life. It sustains us in the present and prepares us for the future. You see, God's word is a moral GPS compass. It keeps us from harming ourselves or running into unexpected traffic that will derail us and keep us separated from God. See God's word when we are obedient to God's word results in rewards, lifetime benefits, benefits of a present abundant life and a future eternal life. When we look at verses seven through nine, we see six different words to describe the Bible. You see the word law, statutes, precepts, commands, fear, and ordinance. All different words with a slightly different shade of meaning, but all referring to God's word. And in this we find nourishment that's needed for our souls. See, in verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. To us, the law sounds boring. It's trying to read like the New Jersey Code on water purification, and those who live out here in this area know that that's not working too well. But the word law has, uh, uh, it refers to the Torah. First five books of the Bible, in the Hebrew tradition, these uh, instructions to holiness, not some legal code, like the Pharisees thought. Therefore, it points out, teaches, and makes plain what the Lord requires for salvation and to be accepted in his sight. The psalmist celebrates the Torah of Yahweh because it comes directly from God giving the psalmist direct access to God's wisdom. The word of God does the same for you and me when we look at 2 Timothy 3.16, because it reminds us that all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. See, I like the words in Timothy. He says all scripture, not some, but all are God-breathed, meaning God-inspired. God places the words and meanings into the hearts of women and men. These words are everything you need for holy living. Yes. That means a life that God, you have separated for the purpose of serving God. Yes. The word of God is profitable, meaning valuable for teaching, rebuking, or expressing disapproval, correcting and training in righteousness. God's word is sufficient for all things. Yes, now the other five words, perfect, trustworthy, radiant, pure, and right, are just different ways of describing the parts of the Word of God. Yes. Along with the six ways of describing God's Word, we find several descriptions of what God's Word is like. Okay, First, we find that it is perfect. perfect. Perfect meaning complete, lacks nothing. Yes. You don't need to add to it. I, mean, I think there's a scripture that tells us not to add in it, or not, a, not a tittle dottle to it, okay? Yes. Take it as it is. Don't add to it and don't subtract from it. It's perfect just the way it is. Yes. Complete. All completing, all pertaining to re the requirements of salvation. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The word has exactly what we need to know in order for us, for, order for us to know God and to live our lives for God. Micah 6, 8 tells us that the Lord requires us to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Those are words we need to have on our foreheads today. So everybody you come in contact with says, the Lord requires you to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. 
Now don't laugh because that's what they used to do back in the old days. In the Old Testament, they wore the words on their forehead. So they would be reminded of God's word. Or they had the words posted up in their doorposts so they wouldn't forget God's word. You know, some of these, 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 these traditions need to be brought back because people have a way of forgetting that God requires us to do these things. In the New Testament, Jesus sums it up with these words. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, the important part to remember is you should love God, your Lord, with all your heart. Because if you love God with all your love, with all your heart, if you truly love God, that's going to be a different kind of love than the love people are expressing today. Because there's no way in the world you could love God and treat others the way that people are treating others today and tell me that you love God. Because if it is, you don't really love yourself. So I want you to love God in that true way, like God loves us, love God, so that we can then love ourselves in order to be able to what? Love others. Oh, our rich diet of God's word for the nourishing of soul prepares us to serve God and to serve others. It is complete with that soul nourishing ingredients for life. This brings benefit to our earthly living as well as our eternal well-being. Well, I'm not saying that everything in life is going to be perfect and that we will be free of heartache and pain. God doesn't promise that. But what he does promise is that the word of God is a radiant light, like a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Today we may use a flashlight, or some of you may use your fancy phones, okay, to light up the darkness. It brightens the entire area. But when you shine it on the ground, in the darkness, in front of your feet, it lightens the way in front of us, thus allowing us to see one step at a time, not to stumble or fall over any object that may be in our path. See, God's word works in a similar way. When we have ingested God's word, scripture tells us the word is hidden in our hearts so that we may not sin against him. Wherever we serve God and serve others, sin has a way of blocking our paths. Sin is always lurking at our footsteps, but we need the word's lamp to shine on it, to make it clear and plain, allowing us to see it and avoid stumbling on it. This allows us to, de to make detours, turn around or go around them, just like the detour signs on a the highway. They warn us. God's law serves as a warning sign. Beware of what's ahead. Now, psalmists also state that there are statues but these statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. See, God's statues are warning signs and flashing lights for our safety. They are not up for debate. This refers to God's reliability. We sang that song, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand, because we know his hand is reliable. It's trustworthy. It is funny that many things written 100 years ago or even 10 years ago, or even two minutes ago, are obsolete. But the word of God never becomes obsolete or outdated. God's word is sure, faithful, and steadfast. Even the simple, the most easily led astray, are made wise and have full judgment. Have you ever wondered about those that they consider to be developmentally disabled, cognitively? You know they know and understand who God is? I remember going to a place in this, up here in North Jersey called Matheny, yes. or Matheny. It's a facility for the developmentally disabled. Yes. And if you could watch the young people there, yes. praising God, having a worship service, and they are mentally developmentally disabled, but they know God. Right. So God's word can even touch those who may not have the full capabilities that we have. Even little babies find delight in church, in church praising God. You bring a little baby to church and you put the church music on and see what happens. The baby's going to leave that seat and you see him up and down the aisle just praising the Lord. Human laws have to be periodically just updated, but God's law and statutes never change. They remain the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. There's no way you can encounter God's word and not be affected. Scripture tells us the word is like a two-edged sword. 
like a two-edged sword, like a two-edged razor blade for us today, it can cut both ways. There's no way you can escape the short edges. Similarly, there's no way you can escape God's word. No straddling the fence. You are either for it or against it. No middle of the ground. You're either going to go to serve God or you're going to serve the world, mammon, as scripture calls it. So you need to know that God's word is reliable and trustworthy. Can't trust everybody else. Don't put your trust in the stock market. Don't put your trust in the government. Don't put your trust in the next political politician. Don't even put your trust in the doctor, but put your trust in God. You might listen to the doctor, but your trust is in God. And you pray that God will assist that doctor or that lawyer or that politician to do the right thing. David tells us the precepts of the Lord is right, giving joy to the heart. The word precept refers to rule or principle, prescribing a certain course of action or conduct. Another way to describe the word precept is, is the word roadmap. It's like our modern day GPS that gives you direction from one destination to another. Well, the word of God is our GPS, setting us on the right track. For there is great joy in being on the right track, not on a road that leads to destruction. No one wants to be on a highway and be going the wrong way. Or maybe you have. And maybe you spent hours going in the wrong direction, sometimes in circles. And you gotta admit it now. Or perhaps you became so disillusioned that you just gave up and returned home and never reached the destination. Now don't say you've never done that, because I know we all have, because I have. I know that's happened to me. But God's word is better. You see, the GPS stands for God's positioning system. And now I want to read a statement to you that I read. I just got it, and, and I thought it was great. It talks about this God positioning system. You see, our spiritual D GPS isn't programmed to make sure we get everything we want in life. It's programmed to draw us near to God and to help us walk in the purpose that he's designed for us. It is programmed to bring about his greatest glory and our greatest good. But it's like... But much like a global positioning system in a car, God has also a protection system. So GPS is your God's protection system. It does us no good if we don't follow it. And that's true of your GPS. Except for sometimes when you follow your car GPS, it takes you in the wrong, because it hasn't been updated. <laughs> but remember, God's GPS doesn't need to be updated because it's never obsolete. But we won't use it if we think we already know the way. And so sometimes we have to take that, we have that sense of humility, recognizing that we don't know all things and don't know all ways and depend on God's GPS. The word is also radiant, pure, enduring, forever, and altogether righteous. God's word keeps us from stumbling in the darkness of sin, prevents us from going to areas that may cause us harm, keeps us on the straight and narrow path, in, and Proverbs tells us in their hearts, human plan their course. <laughs> but the Lord establishes their steps. Thank God that, God that God establishes our steps. Because if we go according to our plans, it leads to destruction. You know that, that statement, when, God when we plan, God laughs? Because God's steps and plans are better. Along these different ways to describe the words of God, we find several ways... God's word affects us. It revives our souls like a cup of cold water on a hot day. It makes wise the simple. It floods our hearts with joy and it gives light to our eyes and it endures forever. Charles Spurgeon once wrote that the delightful study of Psalms has yielded me boundless profit and ever-growing pleasure. Further, he said, the word of God is better than a hot fudge Sunday or fresh oatmeal, raisin cookies. I don't know why folks like to, like, to com like to compare God's word to food, but that's what we understand, right? And so when you think about that, it's better than that, okay? <laughs> there are many words in these verses to describe the word of God. We see that the Lord is perfect. We see the decree of the Lord is sure. The commandments of the Lord is clear. And the ordinances of the Lord is true. When we ingest the just the God's words and we keep them. Verse 11 tells us there is great reward. See, that's our great assurance. The first four words describing God's word as pure 
sure, trustworthy, clear, and true. These are all benefits of the law. These are the assurances that God gives to us, that assurance of lifetime benefits. When we gather this week with family or friends to feast on our meal for Thanksgiving, let us show gratitude to God's word that gives us assurance of a lifetime benefit, that lifetime benefit of an abundant life and eternal salvation through Christ Jesus. But let us not just stop at that. Let us show our gratitude for those who came before us 93 years ago and weathered the storm to provide us with this building. Our forefathers and mothers did not worship in a building of this magnitude and comfort. They believed that, I believe, they started on a porch and then a little red building that was heated by a pot belly stove. Far cry from a pot belly stove. Heating and air conditioning. Let us show gratitude for those who followed and stood on the promises of God and built a second building and acquired additional land. If it had not been for the Lord on their sides, where would we be today? For the years they worshiped in that white building, acquiring a land and had a steeple and a bell that would ring every Sunday morning for Sunday school. Yes, Reverend Carpenter would go out there, 9.30, pull that string, ring that bell. Let us show gratitude to those who struggled in that white building, but came out as pure gold. They had the spiritual guidance and faith to press on, even when there was very little money. But God saw a way out of no way. They rested on the insurance plan of God and were able to build this edifice that we now occupy. A far cry from the first building, a far cry from the porch, a far cry from the red building, a far cry from even the white church, a building that our forefathers and mothers never imagined, a place of worship that many of us who are living today, were living during that time, but we couldn't even imagine. But we trusted on God's promises and relied on his word, and here we are today. You see, God's lifetime benefits can never be reduced. God's lifetime benefits can never be eliminated. God's lifetime benefits can never be legislated. Lifetime benefits where you don't have to worry about the premiums increasing because of pre-existing medical conditions or pre-existing sinful conditions. Lifetime benefits that require no copay because we can't work to earn it. It's a gift that God gives to us. Lifetime benefits that cannot be burned up, turned into rubbish. Why? Because we have lifetime benefits that are incorruptible. God's word is an assurance plan that rewards us with lifetime benefits that's better than any life insurance policy, better than any retirement policy, and better than any Build Back America plan. Yo, you, you see, God's assurance plans guarantees us life and death benefits that are out of this world. Out of this world. He assures us lifetime benefits of an abundant life while we're here on earth and eternal life when we go to reign with him. So let us show us our gratitude this week for an assurance plan that rewards us with lifetime benefits, lifetime of abundant living, and lifetime of eternal reigning with our Lord and Jesus, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us show our gratitude for those lifetime benefits that God promises through his word. But we will only know those benefits, you know, you, just like when you get an insurance policy, you got to read it. And so just like God's assurance plan, you got to read it. Don't skip the fine print. You need to read all of it, every bit of it. Because remember we said that all scripture is breathed and it's profitable. And so let us remember to read our assurance plan on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen, amen. We want to thank Reverend Johnson for bringing that message on this glorious day. Amen, 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 amen. I tell you, you know, uh, when you think about it, uh, 
that blessed assurance that she's talking about, gratitude for God's assurance. And I, I, I you know, you don't think about it until you, in the way she started putting it together there, there, there that, uh, I like that part with no copay. <laughs> I like that. No copay. You can't do nothing. <laughs> it's all paid for. Amen. Amen. Well, when the word is preached, we make no assumption that everyone within the hearing of our voice has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And if you, uh, as Reverend says, you were sitting down and thinking about your, your, your assurance plan, and you came to the conclusion that maybe I need to, to improve it, maybe, you know, between now and until December the 7th is a time for me to update my medical plan. So maybe I should take a look at my spiritual assurance plan. And if you did that and you found that uh, uh, you had some sins, but you, in the midnight hour, you asked the Lord to forgive you for your sins. And in that process, you honestly and truly believe that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross, spent three days in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day arose with all power, and he did it for you. If you truly and honestly believe that, my Bible tells me that you already have salvation. You already have a place in heaven for you. But if you would like to uh, 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 become a member, join a band of believers, a, a church, <laughs> Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 90 three years of uh, dedicated service, praising the Lord and glorifying and uplifting his word. If you would like to become a member of that church, then all you have to do is see me at the end of service. I'll be at the door. Just, just, just bump my elbow and tell me that you would like to become a member of this church. And if you're watching over the internet, we appeal to you the same opportunity you are invited to join this church. You can become a virtual member. <laughs> we have associate members and we have virtual members. You, if you want to just watch us every Sunday and, and, and be under uh, our, 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 our authority, then all you have to do is just punch one of those buttons on that computer that you're watching right now. Send me an email, send me a text phone call, let me know, and I will be sure to get back in touch with you. But for all of you all here today, who already has accepted Jesus Christ <laughs> as Lord and Savior. Wasn't that a powerful sermon that we heard? Wasn't that a powerful sermon that we heard? Amen, 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 amen. We're going to ask you to rise from your seats right now, sing uh, oh, about one verse of Let the Church Say Amen. And let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. I want to wish each and every one of you all a joyful Thanksgiving. And when you sit down on this Thursday, and it doesn't matter if you are eating a bologna sandwich or if you're eating turkey, it doesn't matter. Please give thanks to the Lord for allowing you to have that opportunity. Think about those who might not be as blessed as you, and maybe you can invite somebody over, or maybe you can prepare a meal and give it to somebody, who knows? Or if you're working in a soup kitchen or some place where you're serving this Thanksgiving, do it in reverence of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Do it on his behalf. Not your behalf, but do it on his behalf. Amen? Amen, amen. We're going to ask Reverend uh, uh, Johnson to come back now with closing remarks and the benediction. But on behalf of my wife, First Lady, Reverend Sharon Cully, and the Cully family, we wish all of you all 
a happy, happy, a joyful Thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Let the church say amen. hearts and minds are ready. Lord, we just thank you for your assurance plan this morning, Lord. We thank you with, with, with our hearts and our minds and our soul. And Lord, we ask that everyone will have that attitude of gratitude this week, not only for what they have, but for who they are and to whom they belong. This we thank you, Lord. And so now, may the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us forever. Let the church say amen. 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 Everyone have a happy Thanksgiving. Go in peace. <laughs>